All right, so let's transition from ethers to talk about a specific class of cyclic ethers. Three-membered rings containing an sp3 oxygen. These are epoxides. Epoxides are excellent xenthons, which means that they have a great deal of reactivity and they can be used to construct a wide range of functional groups in target products. What that means is we're going to use them as electrophiles for two reasons. Electrophilic epoxides react with a variety of nucleophiles, first of all, because of bond angle strain. Think of this as being a triangle. Each bond angle here is 60 degrees. And ideally, it should not be 60 degrees for an sp3 carbon that is stable. It should be 109.5 in an ideal geometry. So, there's a driving force, a thermodynamic driving force to break open that three-membered ring. Additionally, there's electrophilic character or positive charge on the carbon because of the CO bond dipole. Of course, the CO bond dipole is polarized towards the more electronegative oxygen. So there's a great deal of electrophilic character here on these carbons. And there is more nucleophilic character, basic character, at the oxygen. So if you add an acid to this compound, this oxygen acts as a base. If you add a nucleophile to this compound, the carbons act as electrophiles keep those ideas in mind. Now there are two ways to open epoxides. But no matter which one you're doing, there's a common rule for stereochemistry. Stereochemistry of epoxide opening is always an SN2-like anti-addition. Meaning that if you are going to take a nucleophile and open the epoxide or break a sigma bond, we must populate or put electron density into the empty sigma star, the antibonding orbital. It's always on the back side, or 180 is the great probability function. It has the best chance of attacking anti to the CO bond. So that oxygen is sort of a leaving group, but he doesn't leave completely, he's still attached to the carbon on the right. We didn't change anything about this carbon's functionality. And these two groups are anti, or need to be trans, in your product. Next, you can add some proton source. Of course, that would not be a freely floating H+. Plus. It would come from hydronium or some derivative. And it gives you the epoxide. So when you see you have some functional group that could have been a nucleophile, and it is 1, 2, and trans to an alcohol or some derivative of an alcohol, this will tell you epoxide intermediate. Or think about that epoxide synthon. So let's talk about the regiochemistry. So the regioselectivity 
or where we break the epoxide open, the more versus less hindered side, depends on <coughs> either acidic versus basic media or conditions. Basic's easier. You should think of this as being a pure SN2 type reaction. If you have an epoxide that's asymmetric, so let's say it's on the front side of the ring here, and you have a methyl group that is hindering this position, making this more hindered at the tertiary carbon, we know that SN2 favors less hindered carbon. It's faster to attack. It's easier to find that sigma star orbital on the back side if you attack the secondary carbon. So under basic conditions, when you have some charged nucleophile or at least reactive nucleophile, if it's neutral it needs to be quite nucleophilic despite being neutral. Let's consider the case of sodium methylate. Perhaps an aprotic solvent, DMF. Sulfur is a good lone pair and will attack that sigma star orbital faster at the secondary site, breaking the CO bond. And so in the initial addition product, sulfur must be trans to the oxygen. And this carbon bearing the tertiary alkoxide goes unchanged. His stereochemistry is the same. This is initially the S configuration and it remains S, but the other was R and has now inverted to S. S and 2 invert stereochemistry and these must be anti. The alcohol that will form from the epoxide and the nucleophile that broke the epoxide. And so now in a later second step, 1, 2, you protonate to get your alcohol. So that's going to be basic solution. It doesn't mean there's hydroxide in there necessarily, it just means you have a good nucleophile. And good nucleophiles are going to attack via SN2. So nucleophilic surroundings you should think of as being basic conditions. Let's compare acidic. Let me do this one separately. So acidic solution will use an asymmetric epoxide and something like HBr. Of course that's a strong acid. There's no free bromide in the solution until this dissociates. And so what will happen first is the partially negative or the electron rich oxygen, the basic end of the molecule will react with the acidic reagent. This generates an epoxide. We know this is just like a three-membered ring from the past. A halonium or bridge intermediate. Where you have some large atom here, and in reality, I should show it, where you have a long bond from the more substituted carbon, a shorter bond from the primary carbon, and a great deal of positive charge at tertiary carbon. There is more electrophilic character here when you have this three-membered ring with a positive charge. It is not faster anymore to attack the primary carbon. 
the bond is already sort of half broken. And it half breaks away from the carbon that will better stabilize positive charge. So when you have a positively charged three-membered ring, it breaks open from the tertiary side to deliver a lone pair back to oxygen. But the stereochemistry is still SN2 because it is still the force of this nucleophile attacking anti that fully breaks the epoxide opening open. So you get bromine anti to the OH. And the ethyl and methyl are sort of inverted. They were pushed down in the page and now they're inverted up. Because the configuration must change for an SN2 mechanistic step. This was initially the S configuration. Let me emphasize that. Still S, and now it's R. So the stereochemistry still is inversion SN2 type result. But the regioselectivity now is that you attack the more substituted carbon. with the nucleophile because there's more electrophilic character on this carbon. So it is not that there's more positive charge here necessarily before but upon protonation, that's what really starts to weaken this bond. And it selectively weakens the bond from the more substituted center more. It makes it longer, and it's easier to break. That's another way of saying it better stabilizes positive charge, so it is more electrophilic. It's an electrophilic tertiary carbon. So keep those in mind. These are great reactions to do in synthesis because you have two things you can control. If you're basic versus acidic, you can control which carbon you attack. You can control the regiochemistry. And the stereochemistry is always SN2, anti-addition. So you can get a single regioisomer and a single stereoisomer as a major product. And that's quite powerful in synthesis. Let's do an example. So consider an alkyl bromide. And we want to synthetically transform this. We want to transform it to a chiral alcohol. We're going to have a cyano substituent. And these are specifically trans. There's no way to control the enantio specificity. You're going to get the enantiomer of this as well. It'll be racemic. But I want to emphasize that you want to have only the RRSS combination, where hydroxyl and cyano are trans and trans only in this enantiomeric pair. This is stereospecific. So we will need to keep that in mind when we select reagents. So what I do is I think about, well, cyanide could have been a nucleophile. That's a great. Sodium cyanide, potassium cyanide, weak base, good nucleophile that does SN2 type reactions. 
and it's trans to an alcohol, this oxygen could have been an epoxide. So let's go that route. I'll do this one, but the same mechanism, just opposite stereochemistry would happen for the other. So I'll draw the intermediate that you would have had before this. Find a better pen. Not that one. Let's try the purple. Good. Okay. So, the al uh, alcohol on top of the ring means the epoxide was there. This carbon here has not undergone any stereochemical change. So the attack must have happened at the carbon that is currently S, meaning we need to attack the less substituted carbon, or we need to do it under basic conditions. With a good nucleophile, and perhaps any polar aprotic solvent to encourage us in two type reaction followed by an acid workup. That would attack from the back and then you protonate the alkoxide. We know that epoxides are only one step away from alkenes. You should remember this from unit two. Where electrophilic addition of some peroxy acid like metachloroperoxybenzoic acid, but it could also be any peroxy acid that occurs via a concerted syn addition and adds the oxygen across the alkene, installing both CO bonds, cis, in the, on the same face. You get the cis three-membered ring. And now we can see an alkyl bromide is only one step away from an alkene. We need to remove HBr. This is missing in that compound. There are two hydrogens on the secondary carbon, now there's one. When you lose a hydrogen and you lose a leaving group, that's elimination, and it's better to do E2 than E1 because E2 favors tertiary. Now E1 also favors tertiary, right? Carbocations form faster, but E1 and SM1 compete. So I try not to rely on those in synthesis because you'll get a mixture of products. E1 and SM1 both form a carbocation. They both have the same rate limiting step. It's only what happens to the carbocation that differs. So because they compete, they both prefer tertiary, it's hard to control which one is major versus which one's minor. Temperature helps, but it's not perfect. So use E2, because that favors tertiary. Use a strong reagent that will do a concerted bimolecular elimination. Some strong base that's hydroxide or stronger. Whereas SN2, which you would get with strong base, good nucleophile type reagents, favors primary. SN2 will never happen here. It's too hindered. So, you could add sodium hydroxide or sodium methoxide or sodium ethoxide and some alcohol solvent. And those will eliminate via E2 and pull off the Zaitsev proton. You could use terbutoxide, but who knows if you get this as the major Zaitsev product. With terbutoxide, it's so bulky and sterically hindered that it might pull off a proton from this initial beta carbon here. So, if you want the Zaitsev double bond, it's better to stick with one of these small strong bases. Ethoxide, methoxide, uh, or hydroxide. So be mindful that epoxides are quite valuable in organic synthesis. You should know how to form them from alkenes. You should know how to break them open under basic and acidic conditions, showing the arrow pushing. And you should recognize them as intermediates and excellent synthons in a scheme where you have an alcohol that is 1-2, and specifically trans 1-2, to some other functionality that could have been a nucleophile.